Bruce, thanks so much for talking to me today. I so appreciate this opportunity because uh, having just experienced a sound shower, um, I, I have some wonderful insights to talk about with you. Can't wait to hear. I'm really curious to hear, you know, from the, you know, from your point of view, like, what does it do to our biology? What, what happens? Yeah. You know, it, it's very interesting because in, in conventional biology, when I was teaching medical school, we only talked about information in the form of chemistry. Uh, hormones, drugs, uh, pharmaceutical agents of some kind, uh, as that's what provides information to the system. So if the system's not working right, uh, you take a drug and the drug carries a signal and information and then uh, changes the operation of the body. So we're very locked into a mechanical, physical uh, biology and that's conventional allopathic medicine. In recent years, there's the rise of a, a new kind of medicine, it's, uh, it's called energy medicine. Uh, and the significance is, is that we find now that there's a, a very sound physical and biological understanding of the role of energy and vibration in medicine. Uh, so it's interesting because this is not relatively new. I, I mean, chiropractic got off the ground in 1895 because Dee Dee Palmer started to emphasize the nature of vibration and tone as part of the system, talking about when the system's out of alignment, you interfere with the vibration and tone, and so adjustments of the skeletal system would bring it back. That was in 1895. Over the years, more and more information started to come about the nature of vibration and what we call resonance, harmonic resonance. And what was really interesting is, uh, I think it was about 20 years ago, uh, there's a physicist by the name of McClare, University of London, and he said, okay, look, we're very clear now information can be carried by chemistry and information can be carried by vibration and his question was would there be a preference of one form of information over the other so what he did was an assessment of trying to compare uh, the relative effectiveness of using a chemical for information or vibration the results were amazing and astounding for this reason number one when we talk about chemistry and we bring a drug into the body, the, the drug to work has to bind to something and have a chemical reaction. Well, when we go back to our days in high school when we all were playing with chemistry sets, uh, you, you might remember that when we added chemicals in a test tube and you held onto the test tube, the test tube got very hot and warm. Well, in the nature of physics, heat is called dissipated energy or wasted energy. So what they started to recognize, and McClare emphasized very specifically, was this. If I use a chemical to carry a signal, and I say that there's a 100% energy of signal in a chemical, and I say then I make a chemical reaction, but then I have to subtract the energy of the reaction. It's a thermochemical reaction. So I said, well, what do you mean subtract the energy? I said, well, the heat that comes off is energy that was being carried but is not being used for information. It's just part of a chemical reaction, heat of reaction. Well, it turns out 98 to 99% of the energy carried in a physical molecule is lost in the form of heat. So if I say, okay, I have a chemical carrying 100% information, it goes into the body, has a chemical reaction to pass that information, then I say, 98 to 99% of that energy available for information was wasted as heat. So a chemical reaction carries anywhere from 1% to at most about 2% of the energy is transferred as information. A loss of 98% or more of the energy, okay? He compared that to, what if I send energy via vibrational signature, sound or electromagnetic field or light? I say, these are vibrational energies. I say, if you're passing a signal with a vibrational energy, how much of that energy is lost in the reaction? Virtually none. So if I say, okay, now I'm gonna compare the effectiveness of a chemical signal and an energy signal. And the results are very simple. The chemical signal passes 1% information, the energy signal passes nearly 100% of the information. So the first conclusion was energy is a hundred times more efficient in sending an informational signal than our chemical signals. So given the choice of you want to do a chemical reaction or an energy healing, uh, you get a hundred times more efficiency from the energy healing. That's right off. So McClare really concluded, he said, given the option, 
we must recognize the truth that resonant information, vibrational information, is profoundly more efficient in, in sending information. And also there's a second character as well. How fast does it take the information to get to the, from, the, from the source to the destination? Well, chemicals have to move through fluid. So let's say I, I, I measure how fast does a chemical move uh, in one, one foot. And if it was really moving fast, I'd say take one second for that chemical to move one foot. So I say, ah, chemical signal travels at about, at this case, one foot per second. And I say, and what about a vibrational signature like, e, you know, electromagnetic fields or photo, photo light or something like that? That travels at 186,000 miles per hour, or per second, excuse me, 186,000 miles per second. So I say, well, which is more effective? Uh, a chemical going one foot in one second or a vibrational signature going 186,000 miles in the very same second? The answer is, oh my gosh, it's profoundly faster. So then you look at the nature of biological systems which depend on signals for their survival. And if your survival is dependent on receiving a signal, interpreting a signal, so you can make a response, I say, uh, I, I could signal you with a chemical or I could signal you with vibration. And the answer is the biological system would by far have a preference for the vibrational energy because it's so profoundly fast and so you know, significantly efficient that if your life depends on getting a signal and the cell's, the cell's life does, then there, there's no comparison between the two. Chemicals work, but not anywhere as effectively or as efficiently as energy healing. And this is why uh, we're moving from an allopathic chemical drug-related medicine into energy medicine, because it's now been recognized that energy, which includes thought as well, is profoundly more effective in healing than our chemicals. I have this feeling because, you know, I've been working in our sound for almost 20 years. In the beginning, it was, it was really kind of up there. There's hardly anyone knew about it or even talked about it. I'm kind of getting a sense that it's, it's like becoming the medicine of the future in that sense. And I get, I get a lot of, um, you know, feedback from people that come to, whether it's private sessions or the group sessions. Um, there's a couple of things that I see that stand out in terms of effective, you know, effectivity of, of, of this being exposed to the sound. One is um, anything related with stress, which is probably the biggest cause now for, for disease, stress. Yeah, right? absolutely. 90% of illness is uh, now attributed to stress. Yeah, so I, I really see how sound really it's almost like it seeps, allows the, the stress to seep out of the system, really bring this peace of mind and really kind of bring people into a very, very deep state. So that's one thing I'd yes. be interested to hear, you know, what you have to say about that. And, and the other thing is, is also pain, pain related, you know, arthritic conditions, bones, aches, all kinds of conditions like that it seems to be a really strong reaction and response and and the effect for the sound in these kind of conditions. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very interesting because there's, um, there's two different things you talked about. One is the stress reduction, okay? Uh, and then we'll talk about the joint one in a second. Uh, stress reduction, uh, it's very interesting to understand that if you were looking at a healthy system, let's say on an oscilloscope, it would have this beautiful sine wave, just a smooth, nice wave. Uh, it's got harmony to it, okay? When you look at a stress situation, it gets very choppy, like an uh, uh, electrocardiogram or EEG when you see the wire, you know, the, the lines jumping up and down like that. And the significance is very clear. Harmony is health. Disharmony uh, breaks down that health because it breaks down the harmony, okay? When you're in sound, and they're nice, pure sounds, you entrain or entangle with the sounds. That's why music... Uh, historically, from, from the ancient Greeks, they already knew music was profoundly important in healing, and that was like, what, 5,000 or more years ago. And they started to recognize that, well, we now know there's a reason why, and that is because their systems try to entrain with each other. And so if one is out of harmony and one is in harmony, then the significance is when, when they come together, the tendency is to drive them both toward harmony. 
that, that is the, the natural state of the world is harmony, okay? Uh, so sound, of course, is, is the element that, that music was transmitting this harmony to the system, and the system takes it in. And, and this is why people use music to relax uh, and get into a, a, a lower state, which takes away the stress of the system. So just being in a, in a, a, a sound shower field uh, you are going to entangle with that and, and you're going to take it in and the system, lo it, the system loves to go toward harmony. It, it really tries to protect itself and wall off disharmony. But if there's harmony available, the system opens to it because it seeks harmony. So that's one level, okay? Stress reduction is very, very important to understand the nature of music because it induces a more harmonic, vibration throughout the body and vibration is really the the new understanding and uh, just so you know, people have to know this because there's been a change uh, everything in in our medicine world conventional medicine is based on newtonian physics this is the physics and understanding of the universe that emphasizes the mechanical material universe and and doesn't really give any credit to the invisible realm uh, and this is why uh, an allopathic medicine is so preoccupied with physical things because that's the nature of that kind of physics. But in 1925, a new physics was introduced. It didn't get rid of Newtonian physics. That's still there. But the new physics, quantum physics, is a much bigger science. So Newtonian physics is a small compartment in a bigger understanding of the mechanisms of the universe. What quantum physics has brought in is that uh, while we see a physical mechanical world, if you take apart that atom and you say, oh, here's the atom, this is the particle of the physical world, uh, that was, in physics, the, the fundamental unit. That was always the bottom unit, the atom. As a matter of fact, the, the word atom from Greece uh, means uncuttable, meaning you can't get smaller than that. Well, in 1895, they started to say, wait, there's something inside the atom. And they started to find electrons and protons and neutrons. That was the beginning. And then they finally said, well, okay, what's inside the electrons and the protons and the neutrons? And that's when the whole world physics went upside down because they said these particles, electrons and, and protons, when they went inside, there was nothing physical inside. There were, there were like miniature nano tornadoes, vortic vortices of energy spinning, vibrating. Every atom is a vibrating source of, of energy. And so while we have the illusion that I can see you, you can see me, I, I tell the audience, you can't see me in the dark. And the significance is why can I see you? Not because you're physical, but the light bounces off the energy and then is reflected back. I see a reflection of you. It appears to be like you're really physically there you are there, but you're really there in energy because every atom is energy. And if an atom is energy and molecules are made from atoms, molecules are energy. And molecules make cells. Well, cells are got to be energy and cells make us. And, and so we're basically energy. And then some people would say, okay, I, I, okay, I can understand light bouncing off it, but I can feel you. I can physically feel you. And so there's something there. And, and then again, I go, no. Uh, go back to that nano tornado. I say, if there's a tornado coming down the street and you're driving your car, can you drive your car through a tornado? And the answer is absolutely not. When you hit that tornado, it'd be the same as hitting a stone wall. There's a force. You can't go through that force. And then you say, well, it's physical. I say, well, if you're driving a car and the car flattens out against that, that, that tornado, obviously it's, it appears to be physical, but it's a, an energy force. And then you say, but I, I can see the tornado. And I go, that's because the dirt and dust got picked up in the force. If you filter out the dirt and dust, a tornado could be right in front of your face and you'd never see it at all unless you tried to put your hand through it and then you would feel the resistance. Resistance feels like there's something physical. I'm pushing on it. But if you're pushing on a tornado, you're pushing on forces. You're not pushing on anything. So atoms are miniature tornadoes. They vibrate at frequencies. They have a force field which gives them that character of being physical. They reflect light so I can see them. And lo and behold, the energy universe becomes what we see as the physical universe except in truth as quantum physics reveals. It's all energy. It's all vibration. 
And this is why the emphasis in more recent years is to de-emphasize the physical character and start to say, yeah, but how does energy communicate? Because if you were energy and you want to communicate with energy, how would you do it? And the answer is, with energy itself, you, energy communicates with energy. Uh, and so vibrational frequencies and sound and light uh, and electromagnetic fields, all these are forms of vibrational energy. That is the language that our atoms respond to because they themselves are energy. Matter of fact, atoms give, every atom gives off light and energy and every atom absorbs light and energy. That's a, a fundamental law of physics. Now you say, okay, uh, I, I'm creating a, a healing frequency, I'm creating a healing sound. And I say, yeah, of course, uh, by the nature of atoms, when they're resonant, when they're in harmony, they will absorb the energy from that. Uh, and that's called, in physics term, it's an interference. The energy of the sound you make is interfering with the energy of the body, but there's two kinds of interference. One is called constructive interference, and one is called destructive interference. Constructive interference is what the sound shower produces, is energy that when coupling with the other energy enhances the energy. So two energies can come together, entangle, and become more powerful. But there's a destructive interference which says two energies can come together and they cancel each other out, so there's no energy at all in the net result when you add it up. And both of them are necessary for healing because sometimes you want to enhance something and sometimes you want to bring down the vibration of something so you use energy interference which is fundamental to the new physics and fundamental to the new energy medicine so what in the old days when they couldn't measure it uh, while they still couldn't measure it you, you, you and I are quite aware even if they couldn't measure it the people had experiences with it uh, and, and then, they, but scientists don't accept a person's experience. They say, show me the number on the chart, you know. But now we have technology. Now we have new ways of looking at it. I can read the energy on the chart. We can see this. And, and this is why energy healing is rising in, in our civilization because of its efficiency and effectiveness and, and because of its ability to enhance energy. And, and, and this is what I experienced uh, when, when I experienced the uh, sound shower with you directly. This is what I experienced. So part one of the question, is energy stress reduced? And the answer is absolutely because it can take a disharmony and when you put the right energy into it, the, the structure that's not in harmony will, will, through constructive interference, entangle with the harmony and then the net result is it takes something that is in disharmony and brings it into harmony. Uh, and as I say, what's new about this? 5,000 years ago, at least they were talking about this. But today we have uh, um, technology to read it, but they knew about it that long ago. So th that's an interesting aspect. Yeah. And we have a second question, which uh, seems like an hour ago right now, but I can still remember it. Uh, and it's affecting... Why, why is the, the sound so influential in affecting uh, issues with joints and bones uh, and issues like arthritis and stuff yeah. like that? And again, that's another interesting thing because, number one, people don't understand this, bones have more nerves in that, in that tissue than are found in almost any other system except the nervous system itself. There are more nerves in bone than any other organ system. And all of a sudden it says, wow, yeah, so the, the, the bones are, are fully innervated. And we also know uh, that bones are crystalline. Now, most people uh, think of bones as just like stone. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a, like rocks and crystals. Uh, but they don't recognize it's living. It's very much alive. And, and the significance about that is also it's bones uh, have a character that's really something so exciting because uh, we're just beginning to understand the nature of how this character is called piezoelectric activity. Piezoelectric is a complicated scientific name, but many people are familiar with piezoelectricity. Uh, for example, if you have a gas stove and uh, what you're going to do is um, you want to turn the gas on. So as you turn it on, then you hear click, 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 click. And I said, well, what's going on? And then all of a sudden the light lights up. I said, well, how did that, what was going on? And the answer is, there's a piezo crystal. And when you turn on the, the, the switch, there's a little hammer that bang, 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 bangs the crystal. 
Every time you bang a piezoelectric crystal, what it does is it gives off an electric spark. So that's why uh, you put that piezo crystal in the, in, the, in the gas area, you hit the crystal, the spark comes off, and you ignite the gas. Well, bones are piezoelectric, uh, and there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, when you stand on a bone or you put pressure on a bone, you are the same as hammering the bone, and you're sending electricity activity through the bone. Okay, This electrical activity determines where the bone is going to build extra strength because that's where the, where the pressure is coming from. So it knows where to build bone by the direction of the electricity. So, for example, your posture is very critical. Uh, let's say a woman wears flat shoes and, and her posture, the, the bone, and her, the energy hitting the bone is going straight up and down, okay? And the bone will build its strength up and down to resist the force of gravity. If she puts on high heel shoes, guess what? She changes the angle. Now the angle of the electricity comes at a different angle and builds up the bone in a different way to, again, it's always accommodating gravity. So electrical activity in bone is a very necessary part of bone growth. Uh, but then here comes where the joints and the arthritis comes in, and that is this. As I said, bones are they got so many nerves in them, and people don't realize that when two bones touch each other, that's two nerves essentially grinding on each other. The pain is excruciating, as people with arthritis will know. And you say, well, how come when I stand up, uh, I don't feel the pain, okay? And the significance about that is that um, there's something called uh, joint fluid. It's called synovial fluid. It's a chemical called hyaluronic acid. And this is where the electricity now comes back full circle. The bone, when you stand on it, pushes electricity. The electricity not only adjusts the growth of the bone, the electricity also goes into the joint fluid, the synovial fluid. And the synovial fluid, and this is like magic, swells up with electricity. So as you start to stand up, the two bones don't touch each other. The swelling of the fluid pushes the bones apart. They're actually levitating. The bones don't touch each other. They're sliding over a fluid, and the fluid is keeping them apart. But when you have issues like arthritis or joint problems, then there's things like sometimes crystals get in that fluid, in that synovial fluid. And that, what that does is actually make a short circuit. So that while the function of the electricity was to cause the bones to be pushed apart so they don't touch each other, when you have a joint problem like with the synovial fluid, the electricity doesn't cause it to expand. And the next thing you start to find out is the bones are now beginning to touch each other, and that's why arthritic pain is so detrimental because the bones are not being separated from each other. So there are many different kinds of issues that can inf interfere with the joint that cause that problem. But there are then all of this is related to what? Electricity and vibration and harmony. And it's also recognized that sound uh, can generate electricity as well. So when we start putting all of this together, you start to see that tuning and vibration of the nervous system, something that Palmer talked about in regard to chiropractic, applies to the understanding of sound healing as well. When you can help people cause their joints to, to respond different to the vibration, you can eliminate and ease pain. Okay, so that sound, sound would be a very uh, uh, adaptive, constructive interference that would uh, enable people to reduce the pain uh, and joint problems, especially where there's a syno synovial fluid issue. So uh, again, and that's related to energy and vibration and harmony, which is uh, the new way of looking at biology. Working with the same principle you just described can potentially, you know, heal cancer. And many other conditions which are you know are we're inflicted by because essentially the cancer is from my understanding is, is again the cells kind of losing their natural frequency or vibration and kind of going a bit random and kind of out of out of control and in a way frequency can bring them back to yeah. a more balanced state. What, what do you think? It's very interesting because we've always attributed cancer to genetics. And they say, oh, cancer is running in my family. And, say, uh, and now we know that less than 10%, I believe, is the number. Less than 10% of cancer has anything to do with heredity. 90% of cancer has to do with lifestyle. And I say, well, what is lifestyle? I mean, it's, well, are you living in harmony with your life? 
uh, and, and it's very important for people to understand, so I'm just going to bring this simple point up. There was a, a recent study uh, where they studied the fate of a child adopted into a family where there's cancer has been running through the family history. And they find that the adopted child will get the same family cancer as any of the natural siblings, but then recognize the adopted child came from totally different genetics. So what we're beginning to realize is that cancer is a behavioral consequence, a lifestyle, not responding in harmony, stress, anger, these kinds of things. Well, we go back to the nature of what, what is the relevance of music. Reduction of stress, introduction of harmony. Those two, when you put those together, are additive effects of what? Bringing back a natural, healthy state again. And again, the, na the, the nature of healing through music. And, and so, uh, yes, it has a very profound direct, and almost all our illnesses uh, is really coming out. The American Psychological Association has recognized that up to 90% of, um, of illnesses, or 90% of doctor visits is what they call it, are totally due to the nature of stress, okay? So then the question is, well, what do you do to reduce stress? And the answer is, find yourself in an environment that expresses harmony, because stress is disharmony. It's as simple as that. So I can say, well, there, there are many ways to do it. Yeah, there are many ways to bring it. And, and sound is a, is a wonderful one, because uh, harmony, uh, music is by its nature, we talk in terms of harmony. So the character of music is harmony, and, and, and when you get a, a music that, that expresses a nice flow of, and harmonic resonance to it, it entrains you, and it causes the mind to stop with all that stress and calm down and try to become more you know, harmonious and more flowing. If you can just do that, that it would be a primary incentive for the body to heal itself because it heals itself when you stop your stress. And this is why the nature of sleep was so important. Sleep says, okay, shut off that mind. The mind is interfering with the system. When you go to sleep and the, and the operation of the mind, which is creating all that thinking about, oh my God, can I pay the rent? Can I fix the car? Uh, how's my relationship? All those stresses at night shut off. And that's when the body says, oh, okay, this is our opportunity to heal. But why wait until nighttime? You can do this. All you have to do is calm down. Uh, and so it's really interesting as you start to find harmony and bring it into your life, uh, you get healthier. And love is the most wonderful harmony of all because uh, all you have to do is ask people who are in what I call the honeymoon phase. I say, are you healthy? And almost everybody in that honeymoon phase is exuberantly healthy. I say, why? They're finding that harmony of love, the garden, the, the environment is so beautiful and, and life is so peaceful. So, you, well, do you have to wait till you fall in love? I said, well, not necessarily. How about just creating an environment that would provide you with that? And all of a sudden I say, well, music is really good for that, isn't it? And, uh, and then we go back to the, the same old story, yeah? For, you know, thousands of years this is recognized, so uh, why would it be any different today? Except for today, the difference is, oh, today we can read scientifically the uh, consequences of all this by wiring people up with electroencephalograph, for example, or doing electrocardiograms and reading heartbeat and heart rhythm and stuff like that. Uh, or any of the things, uh, the stress reduction, I, I can uh, look at how much uh, stress hormones, cortisol, is in your system and read it and then, and then have somebody go into a relaxation or get into harmony and then look and you see, oh, there's a reduction as soon as you start to find this. So uh, it's really incumbent upon us to find it. Uh, and, and I'm so glad that you offer an alternative because many people think, oh, well, I've got to take a pill. And the fact is, oh, man, let's get off that track. That's old fashioned. It's time to, time to get into the, to the more effective uh, influence of energy, which is fortunately so different than medicine because pills always have side effects. There, there are apparently nothing yet to be, uh, in regard to side effects when you're doing energy healing. Yeah. So uh, this is the natural progression and, and, and the world is moving that way, which is really wonderful because we don't have to spend a lot of money for that. You don't have to pay for very expensive prescriptions. Uh, um, you, you can buy a CD in some cases and, and, and have that sound wash over you and, uh, uh, and that's a lot more effective and healthier. 
than going the conventional allopathic route. We're coming to a stage of recognizing it's time to empower people. So I can see how you might say, okay, Bruce, give me an explanation of this. I, you know, I can see you could say, I know it works. I work with people all the time. But other people were going to say, yeah, but how or why does it work? Is there any science behind it? And the answer is, oh, yeah, tremendous science behind it. Uh, uh, and this is so exciting because it's the new science that is changing our perception of the world. It's the new science. I recognize there was a garden on this planet there was a garden and garden by its definition is cooperation and harmony and the way we have been living we've destroyed the garden and the fact is we are part of that garden if the garden starts to undergo a destruction by definition so are we so as we stress the environment we become stressed and what's the answer go back to the garden bring back the harmony bring back the vibration and it's so simple to do it that way uh, and, and so much more effective than, than dealing with chemistry. That's a very old-fashioned way uh, of changing it. Not that old-fashioned, because the more old-fashioned healing from thousands of years ago was always through hands-on healing, vibration, intention, thought, music. Uh, they already knew that then. We're just rediscovering it, but this time we're, we're rediscovering it in the form of science, which then brings legitimacy to, to this kind of uh, modality of healing. And that's why uh, complementary or alternative medicine uh, is becoming so widely respected around the world is because people, when they try it, realize, oh my God, it was much more effective than, than the, uh, the other form, the allopathic form. And, and now we're up to, like in the States, over 50% of the people will seek out a complementary alternative energy healer uh, before going to a conventional healer. And the reason why is simple, because people that have gone that route have told all their friends, oh my goodness, this, this, this process I just did was so wonderful. Uh, and it brings other people. So it's growing by word of mouth, but fortunately, it's also growing because there's a science behind it. You know, now you've, you've experienced both the sound shower and, and also the, the, the sound tuning, I call it. Yes. The one with the tuning forks. Yes. I'm just curious to here you know from your own personal experience what what you're going through what what kind of happened through the session for you well it was it, for me it was kind of interesting because i i, I did it both as a person who was saying look I, I have an issue with my knee and maybe you could help me with it and then i also did it as well this is a new thing for me so my scientific inquisitive mind was saying okay what what am i feeling uh, what's going on in my biology as you were applying the, the signals with the tuning forks. And, and it was kind of interesting because I started to find a connectivity through the system. And, uh, and there, was a, another rever there was a reverberation. Even after you stopped with the tuning forks, there was a period where I could feel the harmonic vibration going through my body like electrical impulses going through. So that was one aspect. Um, I also realized that there were parts that you would touch such as my knee, but it would also uh, reference a, another part of the body. So uh, it turns out that my lower back, which now I understand is the cause of the knee problem, when you started working on my knee, the signal was sent back to my lower back, which is where the problem really originated. So there was a wonderful connectivity to that. So uh, basically, uh, physiologically, I, I could feel the system going into a state of calming down. I could feel uh, a circuitry being completed that was sort of, I could feel the flow starting to go. And I f could also experience that uh, it wasn't a random thing, that when you hit the problem spot, it also referenced where the source of the problem was. So basically, uh, I find, well, that, that, it was that coincidence? Uh, it could have been, but I don't think so. So basically, uh, I could feel a physiological, direct physiological correlation with the way I'm experiencing life at the moment and with the application of the signals through the tuning forks, uh, there were direct connections between these. So uh, I personally don't see it as a coincidence, but I, I, I truly see it as a part of uh, understanding the nature of the connectivity and harmony of the system, which is really what brings biology. It, you know, it's funny because I, I, when I taught in the medical school, well, we had cardiologists and they talked about the heart. You know, we had nephrologists and they talked about the kidney and we had neurologists and they talk about the brain uh, and this science is, has, has actually been uh, it's been very good it's provided a tremendous amount of information but it's also been not very supportive because 
when we, we work in our body, it's all systems like an orchestra playing together. You can't just adjust one and think that you haven't influenced the others as well. Uh, and, and again, that's why I say even the referencing of, of uh, touching my knee, but then bringing the reference back to my lower back. Uh, that wasn't an accident. That was that this whole thing is tied together. And that's why the new biology, which is making its appearance more or less very profoundly right now, is called systems biology. You don't, you don't work with one part, you work with a system. And, and this is what I noticed, well, I came to you with a knee issue. You didn't say, okay, let me just fix your knee. You started actually on the other side of my body and followed the lineage of the skeletal system up from one side and down to the other side to create uh, the, the system approach. So that I, I thought that was, a, a, again, a very insightful way of looking at it. Uh, because we have a tendency, oh, I've got a problem right here, well then you fix right there. It's like. You have a symptom right there, but it may not be what the problem is. And, and therefore, uh, tuning the system before you work on any part of the system is really, a, 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 I would say, a very necessary aspect of, uh, I mean, it's like people work on an automobile today. You say, well, I've got a problem here, but not until the guy puts it on a computer and reads, well, let's look at the whole system, and then we'll get a better answer. Because uh, it's very misleading to look at the symptom because the symptoms generally uh, may not have any connection with the origin of the problem in a, in a direct connection. It's not the problem. People say cancer is, is the problem. I say no, cancer is the symptom of a problem. Uh, you deal with the cancer, you don't deal with the cause, the cancer will come back and that's what unfortunately people experience many times in the process because the, the, the cancer wasn't the, it wasn't the cell that caused the problem, the cell was responding to a problem. So uh, I very much appreciated, uh, without you, know, you, you even saying why or anything, but I started to see, it's like, ah, he's going through to align the system first. Uh, uh, and that I thought was a, a very uh, appropriate and insightful way to uh, start trying to understand where's the disharmony coming from. When I do the session with a group, there is a sense of some kind of synergetic or energetic, you know, harmonizing between yeah. the group. What can you say about that? Well, that, that's, that's a, another physics issue of entanglement and entrainment. Uh, so, for example, I have two guitars. I pluck the A string on this guitar right here. And what's going to happen to this guitar? The answer is, it's going, the A string is going to vibrate. It's called harmonic resonance. And so I say, oh, so I pluck this guitar and this one begins to vibrate, okay? Then I go, now I put my hand on this guitar, stop the A string from vibrating. And then I let it go and I have the two guitars. What's gonna happen now? And the answer is, well, this A string is gonna vibrate because this one is vibrating, it's harmonic resonance, right? But then the joke part of it, I said, well then, who's causing this one to vibrate after I stopped it and start again? Who's causing it to do that? And the answer is, itself because it sent the energy to this one, which then sent it back to this one. Well, that's two guitars. How about 10 people? Same thing. You tune, you're tuning people, like guitars. Uh, and it's interesting because there are other forms of healing that work in a group better than when they work with a single individual because when you build up the resonance and the harmony in the group, there's, there's the equivalent of what they call a crowd effect where the energy of each other is bouncing off each other and through that point called constructive interference where two energies come together and enhance each other then uh, one person being healed is influencing another person who, who is in the process of trying to be healed and they're sending energy back and forth because very law of physics is all atoms give off energy and all atoms absorb energy uh, and therefore since we're made out of atoms not only am i giving off an energy uh, but I could receive this energy from someone else as well. So the more people in harmony, a person who's not in harmony comes into the field, like a guitar, uh, comes in, will absorb the energy from those in harmony and affect the harmony in that individual. So uh, group healing is a very interesting concept, just as much you, you, people may have trouble with just thinking that and say, well, wait, look at it the other way, the negative side. I say, uh, in so many soccer matches, uh, riots break out. And the significance is, well, there's so many people who are pacifists in that audience, but the moment the riot starts building up, the energy of that entangles with that passive person, and they find themselves being part of the violence. And they themselves like, 
How did I do that? And the fact is, you were in training with the other people. And so, well, that's a negative aspect. There's a healing aspect, it's just the other side of it, but it's the same mechanism. Thank you very much. Avishai, thank you. Thank you so much for your healing work. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.